Welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial for you guys. Today we're looking at lesson 4.4 and today we're going to be multiplying decimals using expanded form. And in this video I'm going to give you two strategies that you could use. One of them involves you drawing a diagram to multiply and then the other one involves you using place value patterns to help you multiply and come up with the product with your decimal place in the appropriate place. So I'm going to be giving you a couple of examples in this lesson and then I will come back and I'll give you some closing thoughts and some tips. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to be multiplying using expanded form, and I'm going to give you two strategies that you're going to be using and looking at. The first strategy, we're going to be using a model, and before you draw out the model and set it up, the first thing you want to do is you want to take your two factors, which in this case will be 46 and 9 and 8 tenths, and you want to break those down into their place value positions. So if I took 46, 46 would be written as 40 plus 6, and 9 and 8 tenths would be written as 9 plus 8 tenths. That's going to dictate to me how I set up the diagram that I'm going to create. And I'm going to show you what that looks like now. So just keep those two or those four digits in mind, I should say. So your diagram is always going to be in the shape of a square. And you're going to want to set it up so that it's proportionally drawn. Let me draw that a little bit better. So I know I'm dealing with the whole number, which is 46. That's probably going to take up the bulk of my diagram. So that's why this square is a little bit bigger. And on this side, I'm going to write the 40 from 46 and the 6 from 46. Up here, I'm going to write the 9 from 9 and 8 tenths. And over here, I'm going to write the 8 tenths. Now, before I start um, filling in this diagram, I want to talk to you guys about this decimal here, the 8 tenths. And, um, you know, and actually I'll show you what to do once we get to it because we're going to be moving this decimal out of the way just to make the multiplication easier for you. So once you have your diagram set up correctly, the best way to think about it is almost as if you would use this like a multiplication chart. So the product of these two factors would go in that box. The product of these two factors would go in that box. Then you would take the product of these two factors, put it there. And then the product of these two factors and put it in there. So I'm just going to start out by multiplying. 9 times 40 should be a mental math problem because you should recognize that you can just do 4 times 9, which is 36, and add your 0, and that gives you 360. Then you're going to do 9 times 6. That's a basic fact. That's 54. Put it in that box. Now let's talk about this decimal. So here you have 0 and 8 tenths. Now, I've struggled with how I want to explain this to you, but really, the easiest thing for kids to understand and to be successful with is that when you're multiplying a decimal by a whole number, you want to create it so that you can actually view this as a whole number and then do the multiplication and place your decimal point later. So what you're going to do is you're going to move this decimal point out of the way enough times so that it would appear as though the decimal is a whole number. So I would need to move this out of the way one time to get it to look like I would write it as 8.0, if that makes sense. So I'm going to move it one time, and because I've moved it one time, I'm going to tell myself, now I can view this as just the number 8. But I won't forget that it technically is 8 tenths because I need to make sure that when I write my product in there, it is represented as a decimal. So I'm going to pretend like this is Eight, and I'm going to multiply 40 times 8, which is a mental math problem. I'm going to do 4 times 8, which is 32. And then I'm going to add my 0. And then I'm going to immediately stop and say, now how many times did I move my decimal point to the right? It was one time. Now however many times I moved it to the right, when I come up with my product, I need to go to the end of that number and move it the same amount of times into the left and place my decimal point. Now instead of that number saying, 320, it says 32. Now I'm going to multiply 8 tenths times 6. I'm going to think of my 8 tenths as an 8 just so that I can get the multiplication part out of the way. 8 times 6 is going to be 48. I'm going to immediately tell myself, wait a minute, I moved a decimal one place to the right to get it out of the way. So I got to come to the end of that product. I got to move a decimal point one time in to the left and place it. 
So that tells me six times eight tenths is 48. So you filled all the boxes in of your diagram and these all represent partial products. So the next step that you'd want to do is you'd want to go ahead and add all of your partial products. So I'm going to start with my largest number, 360. Then I had 32. And it actually said 32.0, so I will write it that way. Um, then I had 54. And I'm, you know what? I won't make it a decimal just to not be confusing. Sorry. Then I'm going to add 4.8. So I just took the decimals and the zeros away because this is what most of you will do when you add your partial products. And when you get to this point, some of you will panic and say, well, this is a decimal. These are not decimals. But remember, you can create an equivalent decimal by doing what I was doing just a moment ago, but I got a little ahead of myself, so I wanted to back up and show it to you properly. So since this is a decimal and I just want the ease of adding, I'm going to add a decimal to that and a zero because that does not change the value. I'm going to add a decimal here, add a zero. That does not change the value. And I'm going to add a decimal here, add a zero, and that does not change the value. This is just nicer for me to look, like, look at. It makes it clearer to me as to how I'm supposed to add these. And then I'm going to go about adding. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 8 is going to be 8. 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 4 is 10. So I'm going to bring my 0 down, regroup my 1. I know that 6 plus 3 is 9. Plus 1 is 10. Plus 5 is 15. And then 1 plus 3 is 4. And since I'm adding, I can just at the very end bring my decimal point down. And that tells me the product of 46 times 9 and 8 tenths is going to be 450 and 8 tenths. So that is the diagram example. The next example we're going to use is referred to as using place value patterns. And this is where we do a lot of talking about moving our decimals out of the way or to the right and then back to the left. So I'm going to set up the problem and I'll be right back. So here's our second example, and in this example, we're going to be using what's called place value patterns to move our decimals out of the way to allow us to multiply decimals as whole numbers. So we've had a whole lesson on that, and really, what we're going to be doing, just like we did in the previous example, is we're going to move this decimal point enough places to the right just so that this is read as a whole number. And remember, however many places you moved it to the right, you're going to at the very end move it back into the left in your final answer or in your product. So if I were to convert 58 and 6 tenths to a whole number, I would move this one time to the right to get it out of the way. And then I'm able to view this problem as 14 times 586. And I would multiply those two numbers. So let me rewrite that vertically. So 586 times 14. I know that 4 times 6 is 24, 4 times 8 is 32, plus 2 is 34, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 3 is 23. I'm done multiplying in my 1's place, I'm now moving on to my 10's place, so I'm going to put a placeholder there in the 1's place because I'm done, and now I'm going to multiply with the 1 in the 10's place. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 8 is 8, and 1 times 5 is 5, and I'm going to add these two values. I'm going to bring down this 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. Regroup my 1. 3 plus 8 is 11, plus 1 is going to be 12. And then 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So right now, my product is being read as a whole number. If I left it like this, it would be correct, incorrect because it's saying 8,204. I have to go back up here and remember, I moved that decimal point one spot to the right to move it out of the way. So I got to get it back, move it one spot into the left, and put my decimal point there. And now my answer is correct. My actual answer would be 820 and 4 tenths. 
So that is the strategy using place value patterns. Um, in the very first lesson of chapter four, I believe we go into a lot of detail about how to know how many times to move it to the right versus um, other situations. But because I just want us to be able to start doing this with a little bit more ease, really all you need to remember is how many times do I have to move it to the right to get it out of the way? And however many times I moved it to the right, I gotta move it back into the left in my final answer or in the final product. So those are the, all the examples that I have for this lesson. I will be right back with some closing thoughts. So I hope those two examples that I showed you were helpful. So anytime they're asking you to multiply using a diagram and expand it form, you're just gonna break down whatever number you're using into its parts. So if it's 46 and expand it form, it's gonna be 40 plus six. If they ask you to use place value patterns, you're not drawing a diagram, you're just thinking of your place value patterns to help you place the decimal point. I believe the first part of your homework is going to require you to use or to draw a diagram, and then the rest of it just tells you to find the product. And if to find the product you wanna to continue to use the diagram, that's perfectly fine, but if you wanna switch over to um, using your place value patterns or even one of the strategies that we learned in the previous lesson, that's fine as well. So I hope this video was helpful to you as always. Please give it a thumbs up if it was and you'd like to, for me to keep, you would like for me to continue to create these videos and I will do just that. So have a great day. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.